Welcome back friends and creatures. It's Philip A. Croshen with Iron Creature Science at ironcreaturescience.com. Remember, creature, cultivating real exercise adaptations through undeniable research evaluations. That's what we're doing right here. This is undeniable, right? So today we are in group A of the Movement Master Database, upper chest, and this exercise is going to be the underhand cable chest squat. Now, in the clinic, Right now, we don't have the, uh, the cable machine. And that does make a difference because if you think about the length tension relationship of a muscle, um, let's say I would just stand, right? As I get higher, tension releases. As I get about halfway, tension is, is maximized. And as I come back down, tension releases. So that's a U-shape. With cables um, and bands, it's linear. It's not a U-shape. So the further I get, the more intense it gets. So um, that does make a difference, but the cables and the bands are going to be comparable in this situation, which is why I'm going to use the, the bands particularly for this exercise. So in the gym, um, I want you to use cables, but if you're at home and you're doing this exercise, bands are, are, are more than good enough. Um, so doing the underhand cable chest flat. Now, cables are popular, and it's a good thing because is an excellent innovation when it comes to resistance training. However, we cannot forget our anatomical geometric reference point. But what I mean by that is there is a way to train optimally and everything else is suboptimal. There isn't a, hey, I'm going to come in and this is your method. This is my method. Yeah, our routes to get to the same thing can be different, but we have to get to that same critical point accuracy. So when it comes to training with cables, we have to view the cable and or the band um, as a force, a visible force within itself. Now, we're not working with gravity as much, but you always have to be aware of your postural balance. So what I mean by that, that anterior, posterior, postural balance, that if my posterior side is activated, keeps me up here, Anytime I lift my arm up, gravity's still acting on my arm. I have muscles at the top of my chest and at the bottom of my uh, middle back keeping me up right here, all right? So we are fighting against gravity right about here. But now we're gonna really start moving with the horizontal component that is not going to, it. that X component, if we were in space, you knock that thing, as long as it don't hit anything else, it's going to continue going for all of eternity. And that's something that we got to be aware of because in here, the only thing that's going to stop this is you and I or gravity impeding pulling it down. So we can imagine that gravity is uh, not the most primary impeding force on this cable. So I bring up geometry all the time because it's important. I don't know if you remember, um, but there's postulate talking about vertical angles. And as long as you have a straight line, which my arm is serving as a 180 degree lever, now whatever happens here on this side of my hand is going to also happen here. And this is where I'm saying cables are often used suboptimally. What good does it do us if I got a cable and by the time I'm done, and it's nothing wrong with getting to the midline, but if I'm all the way here, and now the force that I'm producing is actually congruent with this angle here and here. Does that make sense? If I have this, uh, what's this about? 45 degrees on this side of my arm, I'm also creating that same force right here. So let's create a 90 degree force couple of vertical angles. So if I'm pulling this cable out and I got 90 degrees with my hand in the cable, I'm also going to have 90 degrees in my humerus in my chest. And I don't know if you remember, but that 90 degree angle is going to be the most mechanically de deficient position that you're ever going to be in, which means it's more, most challenging. And if you can master that position, strength, strength just going to come with it. So underhand cable chest slot, meaning we're going to come here, more in this supinate position, grab our cable. Remember, we're always starting anatomical position to, uh, to, as our movement reference point. So we're here first. 
in a supinated position, we're going to come to 90 degrees. Now you can do this bilateral on both sides. That'd be a great thing to really optimize that, uh, that midline of the chest. But depending on where you're holding this cable, that's going to determine everything on where it's working on the chest the most. So we want to make sure that the bicep never falls beneath, um, let's just say as a reference point, let's keep our bicep level with our chin. So we're here rather than being here because if we're pointing down, we're going to be working the bottom of that chest. And you can keep that in mind if you do want to work the bottom of your chest. Go ahead, bring it down here. That's fine. But more times than not, you're always working the bottom of your chest. And usually when you work in the bottom of your chest, you're not paying any attention to your scapula. So let's keep that scapula tucked in by letting anatomical position be our, our starting reference point. We'll come underhand, supinate position. Bring it in. You can use a phantom arm if it helps. Bring it in. And I, right now, I'm a little bit beyond that 90 degree where I want to be. So right now, it's probably not balanced. Let's keep it at 90 degrees right there. And that's where our movement is going to be. So just with a few movements, stopping at 90 degrees, coming all the way out, I am maximizing this pin name also because where the, the uh, force is focusing, it's going to be right here in the middle, really hardening up rather than trying to get all the way through, okay? Uh, another variation that you can do with this is an overhand cable chest fly, and I'll show you the difference between that because as you Oh, go overhand to that pronated position. Um, you're going to use the same pinnate muscles and then to your delt to rotate the humerus. And that'll get you more, uh, that'll get you some more activation of this muscle fiber to the top of this ridge along the subclavus. So if we were to go into start our position right, we were to go into this movement stopping at 90 degrees, and then we internally rotate it. Well, now, I'm a machine jet. It's like that. It's like that. And can't nothing really stop it. I could stop a bullet right about now. Now, don't you go try to stop bullets, all right? We're not responsible, um, but I'm betting on you. It's not like magic. It is magic. Eternal rhetorical, how do you move? 